Why is confidence such a huge part of mediumship? You've got to learn to trust your connection and the spiritual impressions that you're receiving from spirit. In today's video, I'm sharing seven great ways to do just that. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the bell. That way you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. I'll be sharing meditations, how-tos about communicating with spirit, and you can even watch my readings so that you can see me in action. I teach using my mediumship development framework, the five C's. Each of the C's, for example, being a clear channel, communication in the clairs, is a vital part of improving the most important mechanics of mediumship that so many overlook so that your skills can be ever improving. Confidence is one of my five C's because you just can't be a great medium without it. The first way to improve your confidence as a medium, now this may seem simple, but it's about using the power of intention. I want you to be able to have a tool that is simple and easy to put into practice to build your confidence. This is something you can do easily every single day. A lot of times we don't realize that when we're setting up for a reading or we're just simply discussing our mediumship skills, that the way we talk about ourselves, talk about our skills, talk about what we're lacking is all going into the power of our intention. Now, a good example of this, before a reading, I'll set an intention to have fun and get a powerful connection to spirit. In my opening prayer, I say, help me bring through a vast body of indisputable evidence so that this person knows that their loved ones are here. I might also set an intention one day to say, I'd like a lot of clarity about the way this person passed. I might just set an intention that every day I feel more and more confident. Sit down and think about what you would believe if you were a confident medium, and then constantly set that as an intention, even when you're not practicing your mediumship, but especially when you are. The way that I love to use the power of intention is also via visualization. I visualize most days just for about three minutes. I visualize the outcome that I desire. And usually after I spend some time visualizing and thinking about my intention, I get a clear cognizant download about a great action I could take to make sure that that desire actually happens. For example, I was meditating earlier today about getting even more clarity about how people passed. As soon as I set that intention, I got this download. Google the top common causes of death and make a new symbol, one each day, every five days of the week, and add it to your spirit journal. The second way to build your confidence, this is my favorite, it's creating your own mediumship development to-do list. Now, if you haven't watched my video about my mediumship development to-do list, hit this link above or watch it after you watch this video. This is a great way for you to go through a lot of different powerful ways that you can strengthen your mechanics of mediumship, make a list and decide on a daily or weekly basis the simple practices that you will do. An example of this is even just meditating for 10 minutes every single day. Ideally, I'd love more, but if your life is busy, then make it more a quality over quantity thing and consistent. You could also decide to strengthen one clair a week or one clair a day. You could do a practice that will help you learn how to handle no's better in a reading. All of these ideas fall under my mediumship development framework, the five C's, because I like to make sure in my mediumship development to-do list that I'm focusing on all the different mechanics of mediumship that are required for you to advance your skill and consistently. Number three, join a development circle. This is a place where you can come together with other spiritual practitioners and have a no pressure place and an encouraging place to practice your skills. It's one of the best ways to grow your confidence. When I first joined a development circle, I got really nervous before my readings. Now I never do. This is where I take risks. This is where I'm not totally sure if I'm interpreting the spiritual impression rate, but I'm gonna go for it. This is where I redirect even a higher percentage of the time. It's where I haven't heard a name three times, but I decide to go for it and say it. This is a great place where you can make mistakes without worrying that is to the detriment of anyone who's sitting in front of you. Now, it's also important that you know what the goal of the mediumship development circle is. 
You might want to just practice mediumship, but there are all kinds of different practices that teachers who run development circles might be focusing on. Number four, practice hearing no's. Now I know I mentioned this briefly in number three, but it really deserves its own section. As a medium, you will undoubtedly hear no, even if your level of accuracy is very high because sitters forget things or they're unaware of certain things that you're getting that are validated at a later time. I can't tell you how many times I've heard no only to get an email a couple days later or months later to say, oh my gosh, you were right. When you start to understand all the different reasons you can get a no, even when you might be getting something really accurate, the no's don't take you out of the game as much as they used to. And to develop different ways of getting used to hearing no, practicing with somebody saying no to you over and over again, priceless. We've got three more, but before we move on, what practices to build your confidence resonate the most for you? Please put your answer below. I'd love to get a conversation going. Or if I didn't mention something that you practice often that helps you build your confidence, share that below as well. Number five, take the pressure off. If you feel nervous to practice your mediumship, ask yourself, what am I afraid of happening? How could I be less afraid of that? How could I take pressure off? An example for me is doing free readings, which we'll get to in a moment, but also just being really transparent before my readings. Even when I was doing free readings, especially when I was doing free readings, and when I do paid readings or group readings, I like to explain a little bit about how mediumship works with my sitters and let them know I have a high level of accuracy, but it's always possible for me to interpret something in the wrong way. Way. that can happen. Giving them a little more context about how mediumship works, letting them know a little bit more about how you work, that's a great way to take pressure off. Or if you're giving readings, try to choose people who are really open at this time, who have a really lovely energy. Think for yourself, what would take the pressure off of me? right now so that I can relax and do my best reading possible. This also might be something or a ritual or a practice that you do before you give a reading to remind yourself that your mediumship development does not depend on one single reading because every reading is different and not all of them are gonna be the easiest, best readings ever. If you have a tricky reading or one that feels like pulling teeth, you have a backup plan. You can reschedule and if that doesn't work out, you can refund, that's okay. Number six, photo readings. I used to be kind of against photo readings and I don't use photos when I'm working professionally. However, I love photo readings for practice. You can get swayed by not just a no, but also by a yes. The advantage of having a sitter is that it's helpful to make sure that you're on the right track and you've identified the spirit. But the disadvantage is that you have a harder time focusing just on that connection with spirit because you also have to interact with a sitter. And sometimes that can present challenges. The advantage of a photo reading is that you don't have a sitter. You're just blending with the energy of that spirit based on the photo. And you don't have any validations one way or the other, and so it forces you to strengthen that connection with spirit. And you don't have the pressure of someone sitting in front of you, the time pressure. This is a great time that I like to practice the way that I interview spirit while I'm giving a reading by asking questions through thought and directing them, and then hopefully getting symbols or spiritual impressions back that answer the questions. Not all spirits answer all the questions that I ask. Not all spirits communicate the same way, and some spirits are harder to hear or see than others. So photo readings are just a great way to practice and then you can find out the information after and validate when you realize that the name you heard or the exact way that someone passed was spot on it really gives you confidence to then start going and practicing more readings. Number seven, one of the things I relied on the most when I first came into my gifts was giving free readings. I vowed to give 100 readings for free when I started and I'm so glad that I did it. Now, not everything is for everyone, but that definitely was something that resonated with me. And once you've given 100 readings, you've experienced a lot of different things. You're starting to get to know the way that you work, the way spirits each work differently, how your practice changes and different clairs come front and center at different times. 
it's so powerful just to have that experience. You've gone through some tricky sinners. You've had some incredible readings and you're starting to notice that your level of consistency and accuracy just continues to go up as long as you're focusing on all the different mechanics of mediumship that are required to advance your skills. Definitely do free readings. I would caution that sometimes people go into a reading for a family or a friend first because that's the person they're the most comfortable with. That's actually a pretty advanced challenge because it's easier for you to be biased and have a harder time trusting. Is this something I already knew or is this a spiritual impression coming from spirit? If you have people you love and trust who know really nice kind people who are very open to this, that is where I would direct your energy and your focus when it comes to giving free readings. And then do what I said before, be transparent, take the pressure off and give them some really low expectations for your first few readings so that you can enjoy the process of developing your craft. If you're interested in strengthening your clairs so you can speak to spirit, please download my free guide below. It's called Three Easy Exercises to Strengthen Your Clairs and Speak to Spirit. Don't forget to check out my website, mediumshipwithmel.com. There you can see my offerings for readings as well as ways you can learn with me, like my development circle. Check out this video next. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell. That way you'll be notified the next time I release a new video about all things mediumship.